Please join my Mini Bike Newbies Facebook group and check out my new product, Black Box Dyno. The most basic electrical component is the ignition coil. It has a thick wire connected to the spark plug and a thin kill wire. Ignition coil, spark plug wire, kill wire. This is connected to a kill switch or key typically mounted on the handlebar. The other wire of the kill switch is connected to frame ground. Frame ground is typically right there, but honestly it can be any bolt on the mini bike. Sometimes there's an oil sensor also connected to the kill wire. It's a good idea to remove this so it doesn't accidentally kill your mini bike on bumpy trails. I've disconnected all my oil sensors and thrown them away, but they usually come out of the case on this yellow wire and then attached to a little gold box. By the way, this is another view of the kill wire. This stuff is separate from all other mini bike wiring, so we'll move it down to the corner and separate it. More advanced mini bikes will also have charging coils. Here's a flywheel with an ignition magnet on the outside, but it also has charging magnets on the inside. And this is a charging coil. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there are two. If they sit in here, and then as this thing spins, it generates electricity, which are attached directly to the headlight. Now, as we start discussing things you can add, we will take these wires out of the picture. The first thing you need for all custom wiring is a battery. It has a plus terminal and a minus terminal connected to ground. I've got mine here under this fake gas tank, but you can mount them anywhere on the bike. Next, we need a rectifier regulator that turns alternating power from the coils into smooth 12 volt DC power for the battery. The other wire of the regulator goes to ground. Here's my regulator and the two blue wires go down in here to the charging coils under the flywheel. The red wire goes up to charge my battery and the black wire goes to frame ground. If you don't have charging coils, all this can be replaced with a drill battery that you can charge at home. If you're going that route, get a drill battery adapter and there's tons to choose from. But we will continue with charging coils. The first thing most people want to do is to connect the battery to a headlight switch and connect that to a headlight. Typically you just use another one of these, but I wanted to use this switch. The other headlight wire goes to ground. If you also want a taillight, wire it to the same switch. Next, you might want to connect power to a brake lever switch and connect that to a brake light. Most bikes come stock with a simple lever like this, but if you want to do a brake light, your lever has to have electrical connectors like this. You might also want a horn button connected to a horn. You might want a blinker toggle switch connected to both the right and left blinkers with separate wires. Here's an example that has right and left turn signal, horn, and light. Lastly, you might want to connect power to a starter solenoid and connect that to the starter motor. There it is on the bike. That's the starter motor, the solenoid, and then there's a gear right here that engages the ring gear on the flywheel. You will also need to connect power to the starter button and connect that to the control wire of the solenoid. That's my starter button. The only other thing you might want to add is a fuse, and so I'll scoop my battery down and put it right here. Your fuse will be in a plastic container, something like that. That's pretty much all there is to it feel free to screenshot here. And finally, this is the black box dyno. It has a speed and RPM sensor on the bike and a Bluetooth connection to your phone where you can get graphs of your speed, RPM, torque, horsepower, and gearing. Thanks for watching.